Uh, good afternoon. I just wanted to start by thanking uh, all of you all around the state for uh, being committed and taking personal responsibility for fighting COVID-19. Um, uh, we had four new cases here on Oahu. Our numbers continue to be low. Um, over the last few days, we've had uh, some increase uh, in cases, but it was completely anticipated. It is not a, a concern or should not be a concern for uh, anyone across the state. Uh, we continue to um, respond to the cases and, and take corrective action so that we can continue, the, uh, con continue to contain the virus. Um, just want a reminder that we continue to lead the country in the public health response to COVID-19 uh, with the lowest number of cases per capita, uh, great outcomes in um, the number of of those um, with COVID-19 needing hospitalization is, is low. And we continue to have less than 2% of the tests completed uh, result in positive um, results. And so um, we are doing quite well here in the islands. Um, as you know, we announced that we would be uh, reopening inter-island travel and dropping the quarantine, 14-day mandatory quarantine for inter-island travel. I did sign the ninth emergency supplemental proclamation uh, that um, remove the 14-day mandatory quarantine for inter-island travel beginning June 16. Uh, we know how important it is uh, to restore travel between the islands. Uh, the state is ready. It really is an opportunity to reunite families, uh, to allow all of us to be able to travel inter-island, uh, to engage um, our relatives and friends uh, across the state. Um, we have been working very diligently to prepare for this opportunity. Uh, there's, there will be new procedures and policies uh, in place uh, for inter-island travel. So I just want to encourage all of you to, to stay on the website and keep informed throughout the weekend. Uh, we will uh, implement a new thermal screening uh, process uh, when you're departing from the air airport. Uh, anyone with a temperature over 100.4 will not be allowed to board the plane. Uh, that is clearly a, a change uh, in inter-island travel. Just really want to make sure that everyone understands that um, that will be occurring uh, beginning June 16. Uh, there will be a new travel form and new procedures all focused on allowing us uh, to know who, who's traveling. I think most importantly to gather um, key information to allow us to contact you. Uh, it's a new health screening process that will become part of our overall process to ensure that travel is safe uh, between islands and ultimately uh, Trans-Pacific as we move forward in reopening our economy. Uh, Attorney General Claire Connors is here and will be describing the new forms and some of the new procedures uh, that you will see as you travel uh, inter-island now. So I just really want to ask all, all of the people uh, around the state if you are traveling inter-island uh, June 16th or beyond uh, to be patient, uh, to arrive at the airport a little bit earlier than you usually travel. Um, we will provide access so you can Im um, input the forms before you get to the airport. I think that's really uh, important. Uh, there'll be a process that you can register uh, if you're a frequent traveler uh, to really create a seamless and smooth process for inter-island travel. Um, so. Uh, we really uh, encourage all of you who are traveling, and certainly we inc encourage everyone in the state uh, to travel inter-island if you uh, so desire. Uh, it really allows us to test the system as we move forward. I know that many has been asking about uh, out-of-state travel, and just want everyone to know we continue to work very hard uh, on looking at out-of-state travel. The emergent, supplemental emergency proclamation extends 
extends the mandatory 14-day quarantine through the end of July, so July 31st. Uh, and we are working on opportunities to uh, engage in safe inter um, trans-Pacific travel uh, as quickly as we can. Um, we are looking at a, a couple of different scenarios. You know, I think the challenge for us here in the islands is that um, the new novel coronavirus is spreading around the world and we're at different stages uh, within the United States and most uh, importantly all around the world. Uh, and key markets that we're monitoring here uh, domestically um, include uh, California, Oregon, Washington State, uh, Nevada, F Phoenix, Arizona, I mean, and all of these western states are now seeing uh, spikes in the number of COVID-19 cases. Uh, and so certainly we continue to look for opportunities uh, to invite guests from out of state. Uh, we will be working through and finding solutions that allows us to bring travelers from out of state uh, back to the state of Hawaii in a safe and um, secure manner. So stay tuned. We anticipate uh, being able to provide more details on when uh, we will restore trans-Pacific uh, travel to the islands. I uh, just really wanted to assure everyone that we are focused on the health uh, and well-being of our community. We uh, know that we need to create a new process of travel that is multi-layered. We we're not going to be counting on a specific component, but a system of layered screening that will allow us to reduce the risk and keep our community safe. Uh, it includes a screening upon arrival, temperature screening, and health screening. Uh, we'll be testing, and testing is a key component. We'll be looking at safe travel corridors, and we'll be using that terminology a lot, uh, trying to see if there are communities where the incidence of virus is similar to here in the islands, so that if we invite guests from those regions, uh, we are not significantly increasing the risk to health and well-being of our community. Uh, so um, please stay tuned. Uh, we are creating this new system that um, will bring guests back in a way that uh, maintains the health and security of our community. Um, we do anticipate uh, implementing uh, new uh, procedures and uh, Tim Sakahara from the Department of Transportation uh, will be giving us an update on progress in implementing those um, systems at the airport. We continue to expand testing uh, and looking and evaluating uh, new tests as they become available. Uh, we do know that testing and screening and contact tracing are all critical components of a system that allows us to invite guests um, from out of state uh, in a way that can keep our community uh, safe and healthy. Uh, we are focused on travel corridors to international destinations uh, such as Japan, South Korea, New Zealand, and Australia uh, in a safe way, uh, creating these uh, travel bubbles, uh, and then looking at mainland destinations again. Uh, even though um, virus counts are, are up in the west, uh, western states, uh, including California, uh, Arizona, Nevada, and Utah, uh, there are states that have um, um, continued uh, low uh, circulation of the virus, including um, Alaska, Montana, Wyoming, uh, Utah, Idaho, and others. Not I uh, Utah, Idaho and Wyoming. Uh, so uh, we will continue to work hard to reestablish and reopen trans-Pacific uh, travel. Uh, but for now, uh, inter-island uh, gives us the opportunity to um, test our system and make sure that we can keep our community safe. Uh, we're working with everyone in the hospitality industry to establish new safety guidelines, uh, cleaning and sanitation guidelines, and protocols to ensure that employees uh, can be protected. Um, Dr. Bruce Anderson is here to give us an update on contact tracing, uh, and we're excited because we know more than 300 people will be trained uh, by the end of July uh, 
but I heard we have overwhelming uh, interest in the contact tracing program, and certainly uh, Dr. Anderson is here to provide us with an update. Um, just want to remind everyone that the mandatory 14-day quarantine remains in place uh, for Trans-Pacific um, travelers. Um, we know that and we continue to uh, implement improved processes uh, to make the quarantine work. Um, uh, we continue to look at how we can enforce the mandatory quarantine in better ways, uh, but most importantly, all of these uh, systems are key components to uh, bringing uh, Trans-Pacific travelers back uh, and keeping our community safe. Uh, just a couple of other key points in the supplemental emergency proclamation. We are extending the moratorium on uh, evictions uh, for renters through the end of July, uh, July 31st. Uh, and really great news for uh, parents uh, and the entire community. Uh, child care providers uh, in this uh, have been provided and allowed to operate with the same pre-COVID staffing levels uh, that are so essential to make uh, child care work. Uh, and as a parent of children, I know that I could not uh, be working if we did not have uh, child care for our children. Uh, so that's great news for everyone. Uh, I just really want to conclude um, by thanking uh, each and every one of you for taking personal responsibility for our community uh, and for working with us uh, to keep everyone safe and healthy. Hawaii continues to lead the nation in our response to COVID-19. Uh, the rate of infection, the rate of hospitalization, uh, the mortality rate here in our community are amongst the lowest in the country and truly uh, a result of each and everyone's efforts. Uh, so uh, thank you on behalf of the people of Hawaii. Please take care of yourself, help take care of each other, and most importantly, help to take care of our community. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Our next uh, speaker is Attorney General Claire Connors. Okay. Uh, thank you, Governor. Uh, as the Governor said, the travel quarantine has been extended to the end of July. However, beginning June 16th, the state is going to roll out its new health screening process. This is our very first step in doing something other than a travel quarantine. What it is going to require is that all passengers who are traveling in our island do two things. One, they're going to complete a new mandatory State of Hawaii travel and health form, and they are also going to be part of a screening process. So they are going to be asked a number of questions. They're going to have their temperatures checked. Based on what happens during that screening process, they may be offered a COVID-19 test. Once they've cleared that process, and as the governor said, if they have greater than 100.4 fever, they will not be flying that day. But once they clear that process, then they will be allowed to go through TSA and to continue on their travels. So this is an important moment. It's an important moment where we're testing out a system that is going to be with us for the near future. It's going to be with us as we move through all the different iterations that the governor discussed about opening safely to different travel, Trans-Pacific and, and uh, other types of travel into our state. These forms, as the governor said, are going to be available this weekend. We encourage that people go to the website if you're planning to travel next week after the 16th and you go through the process of filling out this form before you arrive at the airport. This health screening process, as I said, is going to be an important building block. We are looking towards uh, how this will move us through the future as it will move us through a time where we will no longer need a travel quarantine, but it's going to be something that is an important building block, allows the state to figure out how we are going to do things safely and um, effectively during this process. Thank you. Thank you very much, Angie. Our next speaker is uh, Department of Transportation spokesperson, Tim Sakamura. Aloha.
thank you, Governor, for the opportunity to come and brief the public on some of the improvements and all the happenings at our airports statewide. Uh, today, we'll be providing an update on the passenger screening equipment and some of the logistical improvements we are making and implementing to help make the passenger verification process more efficient. The HDOT Airports Division reached out to seven companies regarding implementing thermal temperature scanners and equipment that will be used to help screen passengers at the airports in Honolulu, Kahului, Kona, Hilo, and Lihue. Five of those seven companies responded and will participate. Now, the pilot program will be at the Daniel K. Inouye International Airport, H&L. Uh, companies will begin installing both temperature screening equipment and facial recognition cameras next week. The pilot program will continue through June 26th. This will allow us to see how the system works in real time. We will study the capability and functionality of both the thermal screening and facial recognition technology the cost, innovation, and also consider other factors such as local support that is available. The companies will then submit their cost and final proposals by June 26th. Now we anticipate making a selection within a week. Once the agreement is finalized with the winning company, HDOT will start a very aggressive game plan um, involving three phases. Phase one will have the thermal scanners installed at gates currently being used for arriving Trans-Pacific flights statewide by mid-July. Phase two will have the thermal scanners installed at all gates by July 31st. And phase three expects to have the facial recognition equipment installed by December 31st, the end of this year. Now, regarding the logistical changes at our airports, last June, for perspective, at this time, there were more than 35,000 passengers arriving into the state every single day. We are still far below that amount. However, with more visitors and returning residents flying into the state, we are making some modifications to help the efficiency of the passenger verification process. Beginning June 16th, the same day the Inner Island 14-day quarantine will be lifted, at H&L, uh, we will have all arriving Trans-Pacific uh, flights park their aircraft in the C and G gates, and all departing Trans-Pacific flights will use the E gates. This will help separate the departing and arriving passengers. In addition, the B gates will be reopened to accommodate the inter-island flights. They had previously been closed. All arriving passengers who enter the state will still have their temperature taken by members of the Hawaii National Guard as they exit the plane. Now, one difference is the passengers will then be funneled through a line toward the end of the concourse to have their travel declaration verified. That is also where the passenger will sign the mandatory order for self-quarantine, acknowledging that they are aware they need to self-quarantine for 14 days or face criminal uh, charges. Now, HDOT continues to refine the process to adjust the, to the changes in the current and anticipated conditions. We understand the transportation and hospitality sectors are eagerly awaiting the day we are able to lift the traveler quarantine in full. But until then, we will continue to make the process as efficient and effective as possible. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Tim. Our next speaker is Department of Health Director Bruce Anderson. Aloha, everyone. As the governor mentioned, we had four uh, new cases reported today. Three of those cases were among uh, children in a family where we had a confirmed case, and the other other case was uh, identified as a result of community outreach that we've been doing in various low-income areas that has involved uh, the Department of Health, uh, epidemiologists, public health nursing, Department of Defense staff, and and many other uh, many others uh, as we as we're doing more outreach. But the important thing I've seen in the last uh, few weeks is that our cases are limited to small clusters of cases, mostly families or close contacts of existing cases. And we have not seen any widespread evidence of community uh, illness in anywhere in the state of Hawaii, on Oahu or on the neighbor islands, which is reassuring. And, and as we look at opening up the uh, international travel, the risks would be very low associated with uh, uh, spread from, from any of the areas in Hawaii. So I think we're in a good place now as we go forward with that. The Department of Health has been steadily preparing for the uh, reopening of the state and lifting the quarantine measures for inter-island travels. 
Um, the major, a major part of the preparation has been building our contract tracing cap cap capacity. The department currently has about 60 full-time staff within the department who can work on contact tracing. That includes epidemiologists, public health nurses, and public health professionals. But in addition to our in-house staff, we now have a total of nearly 1,400 people who have signed up at the University of Hawaii for training on contact tracing. <clears throat> there has been good interest in this opportunity, and our partnership with UH has been very productive and, and successful. Our target is to complete training of 320 interested health professionals by mid-2020, um, that is <laughs> mid-July of, of next month, so a month from now. The university is well on track for this with a total of 374 people scheduled to complete their training by that time. So we are expecting some attrition, but uh, we have certainly a lot of people in the wings wanting to be trained. The training for the first group began this week, actually on Monday, June 8th. This group includes physicians, registered nurses, pharmacists, social workers, and others, and recent graduates from the professional schools, uh, School of Nursing and um, physician assistants and, and epidemiologists have also signed up for the training. This group will ensure capacity for the Department of Health in a number of, uh, if, if the number of cases increases beyond what the department's uh, uh, current staffing is. As you may recall, we have uh, new applications now that will enable a single staff person to monitor up to 20 individuals uh, as part of this contact tracing process. So this group, uh, I should add, also represents an excellent distribution among all four counties uh, and is aligned with their population distribution. 65% of the participants are on Oahu, 16% on the Big Island, 12% on Maui, and 7% on Kauai. As a longer-term strategy, the University of Hawaii is in partnership with the department also planning to train in an additional 250 contact tracers by the end of, the, of June 2021 in the next year. This will include university students from other uh, counties as well as, of course, uh, ongoing training for, for individuals here. So we are looking at this as a long-term project, something that we are uh, going to have in, in perpetuity, or at least for the next few years. As the governor mentioned, we all need to work together and keep complying with the measures such as physical distancing, wearing masks, washing hands as we cautiously inter lift the interline travel requirements. We've all done a great job so far. Let's not let our guard down now as we rebuild our economy and consider a new normal. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Anderson. Um, moving on now to the Q&A portion.